Hello again guys and thank you for joining me. So today's piece was supposed to be an easy one. Um, the idea that I had was to create a really sort of loose, more painterly style colour pencil piece without too many colours or details, just focusing more on the form and the lighting of the drawing that I was going to complete. Yep, that should be a really nice relaxing piece I thought. Well, I was completely wrong. This piece took so much more than I thought and there were so many little hurdles and challenges and things that I had to think about along the way that I was really relieved to see this one done even though I do love the end result. Now my first hurdle was once again with my paper. Now, thankfully, I never, ever draw out my outlines directly onto my final piece of paper first. I always draw it out onto some sketchbook paper, and then I use transfer paper to get those guidelines down into their final position. Now, usually I do this because I'm a really messy drawer. I make guidelines and shade marks, and I make a lot of mistakes before I get to a final outcome that I like. So, I don't want all of that mess and erasing on my final surface. It'll just ruin the paper before I even start. And I was so thankful that I'd do that this time. I had my drawing all transferred out onto my Fabriano Academia paper, which has served me really well for the last few years. Well, until the last batch that I bought. Um, I had coloured my entire black background and it started to show the same faults that I had seen in my last few drawings. There were just small patches on the surface of the paper that wouldn't hold the pencil. Um, almost like it was resisting it, like I was trying to place um, acrylic paint on top of some wax. It was really just not allowing the pencil to sit on the surface at all. Now I had spent a good four hours trying to fix this with layers and sort of blending it out until I gave up. I just didn't want to continue if this was going to keep happening. Now why I got the faulty batch after I had just bought a big bulk batch of paper, I don't know, but it seems that all of the pieces that I bought have the same sort of faults to them, so I suppose I have some really nice scratch paper to work with now. Luckily I still had my original drawing intact, so it was easy for me to transfer that down onto a new piece of paper. This time I chose the Archer's 300 pound hot press paper and I had to start all over again at the beginning. After this little hurdle, I had sort of lost interest in the piece and the excitement had definitely worn off as I had done an awful lot of work and had absolutely nothing to show for it. And that really did make it difficult to want to start again. But I had a clear image of my mind on how this piece could look at the end, so I persevered. I chose to keep a really limited palette for this drawing. You may have noticed some of the test swatches under my hand as I coloured the background. Um, I used these to establish which colours I was going to use before I even started the colouring process. Now I wanted to create a sort of golden colouring to my swan, so I chose white, cream, brown ochre, raw umber, walnut and my black polychromos pencils to do the majority of this piece. Now I did debate whether I wanted to add any red tones to his beak as it is the only spot of colour in this whole drawing and I didn't want it to be distracting. Um, but I did decide I wanted to add just a hint just so the piece wasn't completely monochromatic. Once I had that head and neck in place I started to get a little bit of that enthusiasm back. I really liked the overall colouring and I could see that the idea that I had in my head was starting to work. So I moved on to the wings. Now this drawing is based on a fantastic photo that I found on paintmyphoto.com and I'll leave a link to that down in the description. It's an absolutely wonderful photo packed with all of the details that any artist could ever hope for. And I could clearly see every single tiny detail of the feathers of this bird. But that's not the image I wanted to create. I wanted this piece to be a little bit more painterly and I wanted to step back from that really high detail. So the hard bit here was choosing which elements of those photos that I was going to use and which were the most important. Now obviously the size and the general direction of the feathers were important to the overall form of the swan. It wouldn't look like a swan if I didn't get that right. And the placement of the shadows had to be correct otherwise that really dramatic lighting wouldn't work. But as for putting in all that detail, I didn't even come close. I allowed the back of the far wing to fade off completely into the background without even really defining the edge. There are many feathers on those back wings that have very little detail at all. Now you can see here that there are many, many feathers on these wings and that complexity is a really important element to the overall look of the swan. So I had to spend time on each and every feather deciding whether it was important, whether it needed to be there and what level of detail I would add. 
Now, even though I was only using a very small handful of pencils, this decision-making process was very time-consuming. Finally, I moved on to the water. And I haven't drawn water ripples like this before, and I really didn't have a clear idea how I was going to approach them. So I just started by layering the colours lightly in the general patterns that I could see in the reference photo. And at first I thought I had completely ruined the entire drawing, because I was really struggling to understand how the shapes of the water were working. But I just kept layering and blending quite heavily, following the direction of those water ripples. And eventually, after many, many layers, they started to look like water. I would really like to take some credit for it, but honestly, at no point here did I have any idea what I was doing. At this point, I just had to keep stepping back away from the drawing and checking for things that could bring what I had on the paper closer to my reference photo. Eventually, it all came together and it became my favourite part of the piece. For a very final touch, I added just a tiny amount of the touch-up texture and titanium white mixture just to add a few sparkles to the water and on his beak, and I was happy to call this one done. So here's the final piece, and I love this drawing. Um, much like a painting, it looks so dramatic and realistic from across the room, but as you move closer, all of those little pencil strokes and the imperfections become more and more apparent. It doesn't happen often, but this time my drawing worked out exactly like what I had in mind. I hope you've enjoyed this. Prints in the original of this piece will be available for sale once I can get a sunny enough day to take some good photos. But until then, please leave a like or a comment and let me know what you think. And if you'd like to see some more of my work, why not hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, guys.